Hey, this is Terry, and in this video I want to discuss the NP5 Prisma Mark II Network Player. And in the course of the video, I want to discuss why we produce the NP5 Prisma platform in the first place, the reasons for the new Mark II version, the two new features that come with the Mark II version, and then to confirm or reassure those who use the original NP5 Prisma that if they don't need these two new features, there's really no reason for them to update or to buy a new Mark II version. Now, that last statement may seem strange coming from the person responsible for marketing at Primary. You might expect me to say that the Mark II version is something that everyone should consider buying, but that would be contrary to the original intent for our reasons for putting out the NP5 Prisma in the first place. A little history on this might help. When we were finalizing the Prisma platform, the bundle of technologies, our network player technologies used in the current line of Prisma products, it became increasingly apparent that there was simply no way that we would be able to provide any kind of meaningful or substantial update to our original streaming platform. We've developed it over a decade ago um, and while the app, APP application used to control NAS playback based on DLNA UPnP protocols still works and works well, the streaming application, the Air application, was far outdated and simply couldn't be updated as a result of the rapid change in streaming technology. Keeping in mind that this platform was originally designed well before any of the streaming services we now take for granted had been launched. So, what we determined was is that we would take the SM35, the Prisma Network Player module, packaging it as cost-effectively as we could, no display, and using a wall socket mounted switch mode power supply to be able to provide a cost-effective update to those who were using our original streaming technology. And those are the models of i32 with the MM30 media player, pre-32 preamplifier with the MM30 media player, the NP30 network player, as well as the pre-60 reference preamplifier. Now, in certain cases, we recognized that there were people that may not have installed the MM30 media module in their i32 integrated amp or pre-30 preamp, and for them, we designed the SC15 Prisma, and that's the subject of another video. For those that had the NP30 and those who had the MM30 module in their i32 and pre-32, as well as the pre-60, the NP5 Prisma provided them a full suite of the latest streaming platform features and functionality. Now, in order to make sure that the NP5 Prisma could be used by as broad a range of people as possible, people even with very old, less sophisticated DACs, DACs that really couldn't use 24192 or even 2496 file playback, we decided that in the MP5 Prisma we would put a sample rate converter chip. And what this allowed for was a couple of different options for outputs from the RCA and Toslink SPDIF digital output. And so it allowed us to set a fixed output rate. So regardless of the file coming in, you could set it, say, at 2496 if that was the limit of your DAC, and so that any file coming in uh, so that was 24192 would be downsampled to 2496. And if you were in the fixed output setting, it would upsample all frequencies, all sampling frequencies that were not 2496 to 2496 with the thought that that might provide optimal performance. Now we also provided a native playback setting so that if you put it into native playback and set say the frequency to 24192, it meant that whatever sample rate frequency was coming into the MP5 was outputted from the NP5, meaning if it was 2448, it went out as 2448. If it came in as 2496, it went out as 2496. And the nice thing about that is that even if you had one of these less sophisticated DACs, you could set it for, say, 2496. 24192 files would be downsampled, and then everything at 2496 and below would be sent out as its native sample frequency. Now, 
That sample rate converter chip, as much as it provided a great deal of flexibility and allowed a lot of people to implement full network playback functionality, whether they had a primary product with a digital analog converted input, a DAC input or not, or other manufacturers, it became a very popular device. That sample rate converter chip became the problem because it was an AKM chip. And a little over a year ago now, the AKM chip factory suffered a three-day fire. And it was very apparent, and we realized very quickly, that we wouldn't be able to continue to produce this very popular product without changing the sample rate converter chip. And so we did that. We added a Texas Instrument sample rate converter chip, and while we were doing that, we added two new features that differentiate the Mark II version from the original. The first one is, we're calling it an MQA pass-through. And all this simply means is that if you've set your NP5 Prisma Mark II to native output and set it up to, say, 24192, any file coming through will simply bypass the sample rate converter chip. And as a result, an MQA DAC connected to the MP5 Prisma will see that file coming in as a pure MQA file and then continue to render or otherwise process that file according to your settings in your MQA DAC. With the original, the MQA DAC would detect that there was some other element in the signal path that didn't allow it to provide the master quality authentication of that file. And so with this MQA bypass, if you have an MQA DAC, you can use this feature. The second thing that it allows for the Mark II version is DOP output, DSD over PCM output. Now ordinarily, you can't send a DSD signal through an RCA or Toslink SPDIF digital output. However, if you package it or put it into a PCM container, your DSD file, it can be transmitted through those um, outputs and then if you have a DOP capable DAC it will unwrap, unpack the uh, PCM uh, container and then get to the DSD file for native DSD playback. Now we offer this only when you're using Rune so you need to be using Rune and you need to have a DAC that offers DOP capabilities. There aren't that many out there. Ours do not have DOP capability. However, there may be those out there that are want to use DSD files, have a DOP capable DAC, and therefore they'll be able to use that when using Room. And this leads to then why some of you who are using, or some people who are using the original MP5 Prisma, may have no need for the new Mark II version. If you're not running Rune and want to use DOP with a DOP capable DAC, or if you don't have an MQA DAC, there's no reason for you to have this new machine. However, obviously if you want to have those features, the Mark II version will allow for that extra capability that makes the MP5 Prisma Plus more an incredibly versatile product that allows network playback to be added to virtually any system with a digital input. Now, I'll be preparing a video about tips and tricks of how to get the most out of your MP5 Prisma, but for other questions, or that question as well, uh, don't hesitate to get on our website, go to the FAQ to see if any questions you might have can be answered there, or to submit a help request that we will then respond to as quickly as we possibly can to answer your specific questions. Thanks.